everyone. Today we are going to talk about the muscle tissue. This is one of the four types of uh, tissues that you find in humans as well as animals. And what I want to do here in this lecture is just give you the basic understanding of what a muscle tissue or the muscle tissue is because you can go into so much more detail in classes such as histology. But for now, I just want you to give you the basics. And here we go. So one of the things that you need to know for muscle tissue is that it functions to produce force and motion. In other words, this is the tissue that will cause movement in your body. Either locomotion, meaning that if you need to walk, you have to rely on tissue that will produce force or will produce movement in order for you to do so, and that is muscle tissue or movement within internal organs. And one example of this type of movement, which we will discuss in a little bit detail here in this tutorial or lecture, is uh, muscle tissue exists in some internal organs that will need movement in order to carry their functions. And one of the example is the digestive tract that needs to push, let's say, food from one point to another in order for it to digest it. So, and this movement is caused, of course, by a special type of muscle tissue. Now, the second thing that I want to tell you, and it's very important key thing about muscle tissue cells, is that they are comprised of what they call contractile proteins. And these are special types of proteins called, they are actin and myosin. And these two form a special device, let's say, which allow the cell to contract and therefore produce the movement that we have been talking about. So I would like to go into the features or the characteristics of muscle tissue cells. And one of the things that I already mentioned is that they are contractile or they have contractile proteins. And these contractile proteins are actin and myosin. And they are found in the cytoplasm of muscle cells. Now, if I want to show you this in a little bit more detail, I have three pictures that will illustrate this. And the first one is a macroscopic view of a muscle. And then if I go into a little bit more detail here, until I can get into microscopic view of the actual cell, I have a muscle tissue cell, or a muscle cell here, where I can see nuclei. And one of the very interesting characteristics of muscle tissue cells, or muscle cells, is that under a microscope they have these lines called striation, and they are caused by these actin and myosin fibers, or proteins. They are able to cause this striation here. Now, what I want to also show you in more detail, say if you want to look under an electron microscope, you will see a structure that looks a little bit like this, and it's formed by actin and myosin. It's called a sarcomere. And what this is, is my red here is representing myosin, and the pink here is actin filaments. So, and what happens here is when these fibers or these proteins move along one another, they can cause contraction. So I would like to add some more characteristics or features of muscle tissue cells. One of them is that these cells are found aggregated into bundles. This is the only way muscle tissue is able to actually produce movement because these cells work in groups. Another thing that is important to mention is that these cells are elongated, meaning if I look here at the um, my cells illustration here, they are elongated or long cells and they are oriented with their long axis in the same direction. So these cells are oriented in the same direction. 
Also, the nuclei of these cells are arranged in parallel orientation to the elongation of these cells. So if they are elongating this way, the nuclei, as you can see here, is going to be found in this manner. There are three types of muscle tissue and we're going to briefly, briefly discuss them. The first one is skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. So the first type of muscle tissue that I would like to briefly discuss is skeletal muscle tissue. And this is the type of tissue that you find in the common muscles and that are linked to bones. These or this tissue causes the major movements, voluntary movements. An example of that is locomotion. When you walk, for example, you are using your major muscles. And your major muscles, of course, are comprised of skeletal muscle tissue. Another type of muscle tissue is cardiac. And as the name indicates, this is the type of muscle tissue that you find in the heart. It is thanks to this muscle tissue that the heart is able to contract and pump blood all over your body. So as you can see, this heart here, or the heart, is comprised of mostly muscle tissue, which is then able to perform that function. So this is the last slide of this lecture where I'm going to talk about smooth muscle tissue, also known as visceral muscle tissue. This is the type of tissue found in inner lining of organs, and it is associated with movement of organs and vessels, and it's a special type of movement called involuntary movement, which by involuntary, which is the opposite of voluntary movement found in skeletal muscle, for example. This involuntary movement is caused without thought. So no thought is needed. Meanwhile, in voluntary movement in skeletal muscle, for example, you can use thought in order to contract the muscles. Say if you want to close your hands or if you want to move your legs, you can use thought in order to stimulate or to produce contraction. Now, an example of this type of involuntary movement is in the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, where involuntary movements conduct food to its proper direction. And you do not command that. You do not think in order for your food to go from your esophagus to your stomach and from your stomach to your intestines and so on and so forth. This type of movement, muscle movement, is called peristalsis. So this is it for this uh, lecture on muscle tissue. I hope this was clarifying enough for you to have the basics to move on into more detail on this tissue. Mm -hmm.